This week, find out how to stop looking up and typing in all of those physical constants to your scientific scripts over and over. We all know it's error prone, and we're going to show you how MetPy can help. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. So everybody's done it when we're making our analysis script or whatever calculation that we're trying to do, we start typing in physical constants. If it's pi, we type 3.14 and then however many digits we can remember that day and hope we got them right. Or we have to pull a thermodynamics book off the shelf and look up what the specific heat of dry air is or all of these other constants. It's error prone, and it's really a waste of time. So it's something that we're trying to make easier with MetPy. We're trying to give you all of these constants in a way that you can get to them easily, and we're working on making them citable so that you'll know where each of these numbers came from and you don't have to worry about using a different source than somebody else. If you go to the MetPy documentation page, and over here on the left side, we're going to go to the MetPy API, in the constants module, here's a nice list of everything that we've got right now. So we have constants pertaining to Earth, like what's the average radius or gravitational acceleration, water, dry air, and then some general meteorological constants. So all of these have a name, which you can use in your script, as we'll see. The common symbol that we're used to seeing in equations or meteorological texts a short name that you can also use in your script, and it's just an alias for the longer name. It depends on what you're more used to seeing or think is clearer. So for example, for the radius of the Earth, I would probably use Earth average radius. That's clearer than RE to somebody that's just reading the code for the first time. But something more common, like the gas constant, RV is probably fine. But you can use either one of these, remembering that tab completion can make typing the long names a lot faster. Then we've got the units that it's stored in and a description of what that constant is. So if I open up an empty notebook, we're going to experiment with this a little bit. I'm going to show you how to use the constants. One way that you can use constants is by importing the individual constants that you need from our constants module. And that would look something like from metpy.constants, import, and then whatever constants you needed. So I'm going to say g. So now I have the constant g imported to my main namespace. And if I evaluate a cell with just g in it, you see 9.80665 meters per second per second. So that's the average gravitational acceleration. And that's great. But we can actually import the entire constants module uh, with some kind of alias, whatever we want to call it, if we're going to be using a lot of constants from it. And this is the way that I like to do it when I'm writing scripts myself. And, you know, we can import it as anything we want, but we've got a convention in MetPy of MP, then whatever the rest of it is. For example, MP calc for importing the calculations. So I like to use MP const. So I'm going to import MetPy dot constants as mp const. Now in the mp const space, if I hit tab, I get a list of everything that's there. So I don't have to remember all of these. And I also don't have to type them, which is nice. So for example, Earth solar radiance, 1,368 watts per square meter. We can do a, some calculations with these as well. So let's say that we want to know what the dry adiabatic lapse rate is. We know that that is going to be gravitational acceleration divided by the specific heat of dry air at a constant pressure. So we can say mpconst.g divided by mpconst dot, and in this case I'm going to type dry and press tab because I know that we're going to have it in the dry air. And here is dry air specific heat at a constant pressure. I can then evaluate that cell and we get, turns out what we expect about 
nine, uh, nine to 10 degrees Celsius or Kelvin per kilometer change. But that's not the units that we're getting out natively. So let's say that we want to change those. Well, we can use the dot two method as we showed during the units met pi Monday. And in this case, I'm going to say I want it in degrees Celsius per kilometer. And you notice it gives it back 9.75 delta degrees Celsius per kilometer. It's smart enough to know that we're talking about a temperature change here, so it goes ahead and takes care of making that a delta for us. Again, go back and refer to the temperature map pi Monday if you need a refresher on the difference between delta degrees and degrees. Now, we cheated a little bit here, really, because we calculated something that we don't need to calculate. In fact, the dry air lapse rate is something that should be in constants, and it turns out it is. In fact, I know that it is gamma sub d. And if we type gamma the first few characters and press tab, it will go ahead and complete that for us. And we see that we get the same value. So we did our calculation correctly. Using constants like this is a really nice way to make your scripts more readable quicker to write, and more reliable because you're not potentially typing in incorrect numbers and then having to remember what units to assign to them or even manually converting units. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to the Unidata channel on YouTube where you can find MetPy Mondays every week and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. You can follow MetPy on Twitter. We are at MetPy and we post on the Unidata Facebook page. Finally, you can also go to our GitHub site to submit an issue or to even submit a pull request. Links for all of that are down in the video description. Thank you, and we'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.